Hello, this is Dr. Marty Klein. Today I want to talk briefly about how sex is meaningless, and that's okay. I was on a podcast the other day when the interviewer, let's call her Claire, said something like, well, of course everyone wants to feel connected during sex. And I said, no, actually that's not true. She said, well, no grown-up really wants sex to be like, you know, just two bodies hammering away at each other. I had to disagree with that too. I said, you know, sometimes grown-ups do. And she was kind of curious, a little exasperated, I think. And she said, well, if connection isn't the universal thing that every adult wants from sex, what is? And I said, there isn't a universal thing that everyone wants from sex. She was incredulous. I said, not love, not pleasure, not gentleness, not roughness, certainly not reproduction. There are no universal desires involved in sex. Not in our time and place, not in another time and place, not ever, nowhere. Then why, she asked, then why, if connection isn't a universal desire in sex, why else would someone bother to have sex? And by the way, of course, we were just talking about consensual, strictly consensual sex. She said, well, why would someone bother to have sex if it wasn't about connection? So I said, well, people have sex for a lot of different reasons. In fact, the same person may have sex for very different reasons during the course of a month, certainly during the course of a lifetime. She asked me to name some reasons other than connection uh, that people would have sex. Um, so I did. I said, well, some of the reasons that people want sex that don't involve emotional connection or emotional intimacy, um, expressing or experience autonomy, wanting to feel manly or womanly, validating your heterosexuality or homosexuality or whatever your sexual identity is, wanting to feel graceful, adequate, youthful, or normal, wanting to acquire power, wanting a physically intense experience, wanting to feel creative, uh, wanting to forget about or contradict your last sexual experience, wanting to feel aroused, and of course, raw physical pleasure. That's quite a list, she said, <laughs> but sex without emotional connection is meaningless. Oh, well, I said, for some people, that's true. For some people, sex without emotional connection is meaningless. But sex itself is meaningless. We give it meaning. Or to put it a different way, people try to arrange sex that's meaningful to them. And what that involves is different from one person to another. It can even be different for the same person from one experience to the next. But she persisted, but... Sex has to have meaning, she said. Well, I asked why. Why do we assume that sex has meaning? Why do we assume that sex has to have meaning? And furthermore, why do we assume that what makes sex meaningful to Mary will make it meaningful to Letitia? People go out to dinner for different reasons. People buy cars for different reasons. People get a dog for different reasons. People go to the gym for different reasons. And those reasons change over time. So why should sex be any different, I asked. Because, she said, sex is different. I hear this all the time. Sex is different. That's a common cultural idea. I call it sexual exceptionalism, that we need special ethics for sex, special decision-making for sex, special spirituality for sex, and special meaning-making psychology for sex. But that isn't really the way it works. Sex is like everything else in life, only different. We all approach sex with the life skills that we have, which are rarely enough, it's true. We bring our willingness or our hesitation to communicate. We bring our acceptance or our rejection of our bodies. We bring our shame or our pride about who we are. We bring our fears or comfort about men or women. And we bring our beliefs about how much people can be trusted, just to name a few things. Everyone having sex does it while being an imperfect human living in an imperfect body. Feeling ashamed or angry about being imperfect interferes with sexual relaxation and enjoyment just as it interferes with parenting, friendship, 
and other significant activities. Judging or rejecting ourselves isn't something we say for sex. For some people, it's a 24-hour option. Now, my interviewer, Claire, she had one more question, a very common one and deceptively simple sounding. She asked me, what's one tip you have to help a person have fantastic sex? Oh, trick question. I said, I never try and help someone have fantastic sex. My advice is to give up that dream and instead to desire sex that's more enjoyable. And here's how I would advise people to make sex more enjoyable. Don't do it when you don't want to or when you're too tired. Accept your body exactly the way that it is. Tell your partner one thing that they don't know about your sexuality or your body and relax. My tips for how to make sex more enjoyable and how to accept that sex is meaningless until we give it meaning as we want to. Well, I'm Dr. Marty Klein. Thanks for joining me.